Okay, it is now time to open up the filter and get that filtering. So the first step is to turn off the pump and then we're going to move the multi-port valve over to the filter position or filtration position. Right over there. Now I still have the solar off. If you have that or a heater, you know, that's really the last step here once you get everything up and running. But because it's free, I don't have to worry about that much. Uh, let me bring you back here so you can actually see what's going on. That ought to do. We're going to turn it on and watch the gauge. Pump's going to catch prime. We're going to watch the gauge over here. It's going to take a little while because it has to fill up the entire filter. That's a lot of water. letting air out right now. And now it's spraying water out so we can close that. Now that the filter is filled, something you don't have to do, which I care to do, is shut it back off and remove the bung from the bottom here. Just going to let that lug everything out. You can actually open this again to aid in that. This one is really tight. And if you remove it all the way, then you get a nice stream of water come out the bottom there. Which we can see right there. Looks like it's pretty clean. I did backwash this before shutting down for the winter. So I'm not really worried about it, but just as a good precaution, just to get everything chooched through there. You know, it's not really a bad idea to drain it once before you actually put in the diatomaceous earth. This being, of course, a diatomaceous earth filter. So let that drain out. I don't know if you can see, it kind of spit out a, a lump of crap right here. Probably some old DE, which is kind of what it feels like a bit. So maybe we'll turn the filter, or turn the pump on while it's open and let that chooch out some more. Just to make sure we get a nice clean everything going there. And once it gets going more deeply enough, shut it and let that drain. Okay, that's almost all drained. That should be fine. Now you can go ahead and put the bung back in. And then using a screwdriver, you can go like this and tighten it up just a bit. That should be enough just to make sure that it doesn't leak. Now that we have that, we'll put our thing back in here. Run it most of the way and turn it back on. Now it's got to refill the filter once again. So we watch the gauge come up. And 
and it's starting to. You can hear the air rushing and the pressure increases. And once water comes out, we'll tighten it down. There we go. Okay, so we're reading about 20, about 20 on the gauge. So we're gonna go ahead and put in DE now. Your filter and your pressure may be different. Everybody's pool is. Let's go put in some DE. Now what DE, or diatomite, or diatomaceous earth, as it's most often called, is, is a fine white powdery substance that looks kind of like flour, but it's not. These are diatoms, crushed up fossils or something like that I read. You could look it up on Wikipedia. This particular one, and how much you're going to put in is going to be dependent on your pool, your filter, and what works best for you. Generally a good three scoops of this, and you can just go ahead and dump it right in. You don't have to wait. It's all going to dissolve there and find its way in. So there's just about a good three. You may wish to go ahead and stir this up, you can wash off any that got on you, clean up any around the edges here and that. And that's it. Once you get that in, now you want to leave your filter running much you need to filter again will depend on your pool and bathing habits and things like that. Generally this can stay in until the filter pressure reaches a point where it's too high. Now on this one too high could be anywhere from 25 to almost 30 and generally at almost 30 I get almost no water flow. So we're pretty much done with the skimmers now, I can close that up. And really at this point, it's now a waiting game with the pool. We're gonna let it filter everything out. I do have to clean up the detritus from the cover, which you can see has settled and is mostly all leaves and some other stuff at the bottom there. For this, I think manually vacuuming is going to be best because to have Robot suck all that up, his bag is going to get filled right up. So it's going to be multiple stages of manually vacuuming. The problem with manually vacuuming is when you do that, it kicks up the stuff and then you have to wait for it to settle. <laughs> and then you vacuum again, you'll get some more and it'll suck it up and that. But one other trick that I did find, which I'm not going to demonstrate in this video, I'll just explain quickly, is if you have just a spot area, say over on the edge of the pool at the bottom there where there's that black line of stuff, if you take your vacuum hose and tape that with duct tape to the end of your pole, and of course you want to put duct tape over the end of that so you don't damage the liner at all, if you duct tape that on there really good, that usually is enough and it kind of gives you like a pinpoint accuracy, so to speak, where you can go and get most of that without it stirring up because the vacuum has brushes on it that while it does get stuff off the bottom, it always leaks out of the vacuum and into the water and then you gotta wait again. So that's pretty much it. It's just really a waiting game now. We're gonna let the chlorine and filter do its job. This year, for some reason, the pool was not 
as bad, nowhere near as green as it usually is. That could be a combination of a number of factors. It could have been because the the cover I had was new. Of course, it's got two holes in it, but <laughs> it was new. Um, it could also have been due to the weather, and I think that really is the main reason why. Uh, when the weather gets warmer, and I'm talking like 60 degrees and stuff like that, the sun is shining, stuff, stuff like that, uh, that breeds algae in the pool, especially when it's covered. And in fact, when the cover was still on, if you just put your hand under it, ooh, it is baking. It is absolutely baking in there. So, um, I think the reason why was that we had a lot of cooler days leading up to uh, the day when we opened the pool. It was like in the 50s for a couple of weeks prior. And then we got like a 60 degree day, then like a 56 or something like that. And finally, it ended up being a beautiful almost hot day the day that we open the pool up and i think that's why the algae growth is very little this year anyway that's going to wrap it up for now i'll come back when i have an update on the pool thank you for watching this series make sure you click like make sure you click subscribe and take care we'll see you next time bye bye